In a previous video, I introduced the first half of a pair of interesting effects that occur because we have an alternating current electrical system. I explained how the moving magnetic field around an AC current carrying conductor induces voltage in nearby conductors and itself, which is both a useful and troublesome property. Useful because that's how transformers and motors work. Troublesome because induced voltages can be dangerous and the opposing current causes resistance and capacity issues in transmission and distribution lines. There is another property of alternating current circuits that has effects on both the micro and macro scales. It involves an electrical property called capacitance. A capacitor is a device that consists of two conducting plates separated by a space or insulating material called a dielectric. When placed in a DC circuit, a capacitor acts to store charge. The battery voltage charges the plates of the capacitor to the same level as the battery itself. If the battery is disconnected, the stored charge remains on the plates of the capacitor. It will slowly discharge, or if connected to a load, deliver a jolt of energy, dependent on its resistance and storage capacity. Camera flash units typically consist of a battery, capacitor, and bulb, plus other components. Capacitors are widely used in electronic circuits for blocking direct current while allowing alternating current to pass. In analog filter networks, they smooth the output of power supplies. In resonant circuits, they tune radios to particular frequencies. In the power system, like inductors, Capacitors have a Jekyll and Hyde effect, useful and troublesome. Let's look at both, starting with useful. In a utility scale generator, an electromagnet is rotating at high speed. Its magnetic lines of force separating positive and negative charges in the stationary coils of wire that surround it. But as the magnet rotates, the North Pole pushes the charges one way and the South Pole the other. So every cycle through, the charge on either side of the circuit has to flip back and forth, from positive to negative. When the polarity switches, all the negative charges have to run around the circuit to the other side in order to make it positive, and vice versa for the positives. It's like there's a reservoir of charges, trying to keep that side of the circuit the way it was, while the source generator is trying to change it. Of course, it eventually does, but in the same way that the effect of inductance causes a delay in the change of current flow, this effect causes a delay in the change in voltage, and this is happening 60 times a second. The effect is called capacitance, and equal amounts of it cancel out the effect of inductance. Unfortunately, the system itself does not have equal amounts of inductance and capacitance. Since there are millions of coils of wire out there, every motor, every transformer, all acting like little reactive power generators, the system tends to be inductive, especially in the daytime, when factories are working and air conditioners are running. The effect of all those inductors is to overload lines and make the voltage drop because of added resistance. The solution? Of course. If capacitance is added to the circuit near the source of inductance, the effect is canceled locally and reactive power doesn't have to be transmitted through the lines, saving the capacity for watts. Each capacitor acts like a temporary battery, storing charge in part of the cycle and releasing it in another, causing a delay in the change of voltage. If planned and sized correctly, the delay in voltage change will match the delay in current change caused by local inductance, and the circuit will have a minimum of reactive power flow. That's all fine, but there are sources of capacitance in a circuit that can cause problems. Power lines running next to each other constitute charges separated by a dielectric, the air in this case. What does this make? Sure, a capacitor. 
A long, lightly loaded transmission line is essentially a giant capacitor wired into the electric system. If there is little or no inductive load in the circuit, the capacitive effect raises the circuit voltage. First noticed in underground 10,000 volt cables installed by Sebastian Ferranti in 1887, the Ferranti effect can cause a voltage rise of 10% or more between the sending and receiving ends of a transmission line. To counter this effect, shunt reactors are often placed at the end of the line expected to experience the rise. These reactors absorb the capacitance and minimize the voltage increase. So here's a quick review of these two facets of the AC power system. Inductance comes from the moving magnetic field around AC conductors. The field induces voltage and current flow in the circuit that opposes the source and delays current change. We say that in an inductive circuit, the change in current lags the change in voltage. Capacitance comes from the polarity change that occurs 50 or 60 times a second in AC circuits. Because of the charges built up on either side of the circuit, there's a delay before the voltage changes. We say that in a capacitive circuit, the change in current leads the change in voltage. Equal amounts of inductance and capacitance cancel each other out, and equipment, capacitor banks and reactor banks, are placed in the system to help with the balance. When inductance and capacitance are equal, or nearly so, most of the line capacity can go to transmitting watts, the real power that does work in the system. That was an introduction to capacitance. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to see other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.